Welcome to the Character Chronicles, the People Show. Checking the Pulse Rescue Nation brought to you by DPS Concrete Construction. Check them out at dpsconstruction.net. Also, characterchronicles.com. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're as excited as I am, and I honestly haven't been this excited to do a gut reaction since the Colorado game, and that was the most excited I'd ever been to do a gut reaction, okay? We're 5-1. and one. We're heading into a... Uh, a bye week. We're going to play probably a ranked, Indi well, a ranked Indiana team. There's a chance we might be ranked. We're halfway into the season, and I would definitely take where we're at right now. Yes, there's things to work on. There's things to improve on. But if you're as pumped up as I am, the Nebraska's 5-1 and one right now, then smash that like button. And shout out to all the people who subscribe to this YouTube channel. I want to give you all a specific shout out if you haven't done so yet. Make sure you do so so you don't miss any of the content we're putting out here on the Character Chronicles. My last show, we interviewed Nebraska's leading receiver, Jamal Banks. Sunday night, I'm going to be doing my mid-season grades. Offense, defense, running game, pass game. Matt Rule, special teams. All right, ring that notification bell so you don't miss any of it that's coming out. Now, when the game started today, I was there. I was like, oh my God, it must be like 95 degrees. Okay, and the wind was about 17, 18 miles per hour. It didn't seem to be a gigantic factor in the game. Like I was concerned at one point, it could potentially be. Now coming into the game, Rutgers, the biggest thing we had to stop with them was their rushing attack coming into the game. Through four games, they'd ran it 175 times for 951 yards, and they were averaging 5.3, 5.43 yards per carry. That means every two times they ran the ball, they were averaging getting a first down. With 11 touchdowns, Kyle Manungai, all right, he had a lot of rushing attempts with zero or negative yards, though. I didn't notice that. It was either kind of big runs or very, very short runs. It was not a whole lot of in the middle. So how are the black shirts going to be able to minimize the big runs? And I don't know the final stats for the game, but I didn't see a ton. I didn't see a ton of those. Uh, you could argue maybe Rutgers threw the ball a little bit more than we anticipated they would coming in to the game. All right, Nebraska, rushing offense so far through five games this year. Coming into the contest, we ran the ball 155 times for 427 yards. We were averaging 2.75 yards per carry. All right, this. And then our defense had allowed zero rushing touchdowns on the year. Coming in, Rutgers defense had allowed zero first quarter touchdowns. Nebraska's offense had scored five. Now, before we get into the game and get into the meat of everything, all right, we did the former players like the letter winners tunnel walk. All right, I chatted with Coach Terrence Knight, and just briefly, Tony White was walking on the field. We dapped it up a little bit, and I also recorded Dylan Raiola and Indomitian Sue leading the team on the field. Indomitian's the one who doesn't have the pads on, all right, uh, but we're going to go ahead and roll that clip. It's about 90 seconds, give or take, right now. Coach Knighton! What's up, dude? How you doing? Say hi. What's up, baby? Go Big Red! The tunnel walk, baby! Okay. What's up, Coach? How you doing, hey, man? Good, good luck today, Coach. Yeah, I'm man. good. Good luck. Good to see you. Are you ready to play? Yeah, we got you. All right, man. Good to see you. For sure. Game day. I don't know how good this recording is going to be, but I'll do my best. Here they come. Gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed that. It was sure a lot of fun. 
to get to experience that. And when I was talking about Nebraska's rushing stats right before we went to that video, I may have been talking about Nebraska's defense versus the run, but honestly, it's once again, hard to read my handwriting. I've got to work on that, but Nebraska's first drive of the game, they converted a fourth and one around our own 30 yard line. Talk about being aggressive coming right out the gate. There was a fullback in the game. I love that as well. Okay, now Nebraska was one of five on fourth downs coming into today's game. All right, the Huskers move the ball, but they have to punt around midfield of, of their first drive, and Rutgers partially blocks the punt. Punter Brian Buscini is taken out. It looks like he's hurt. He ends up staying in the game, and man, he had quite the game. He, he was clearly in a lot of back pain, had a lot of pain throughout the game. Not all of his punts were the best, but he was fighting through that pain, as we see as we go along through the game. He had a great pass. He had a great punt late in the game. He did pin Rutgers. Uh, at their five yard line at one point throughout the game as well. But I hope he's okay going forward. I do want to wish Greg Sharp a happy birthday as well. And the, the, I did catch a glimpse of the TV commentators. They mentioned when it came to Indomi Kinsu, who was in town, something about they wish he could put on the pads and just go out and kind of get another penalty. And I thought that that was kind of funny because of how much the game of football has just changed. All right, it, it, to me, it's just, it's football and it's physical, but I thought the, the, the comment was kind of funny. But Rutgers first drive, Okay, they'll go, they get down and they attempt a 42-yard field goal, but they don't, okay? It was largely behind the legs of running back Rock, uh, Kyle Manungai, all right? Just, he's just a little bowling ball. He's really hard to tackle, really low to the ground, really strong legs. All right, at that point in time, the defense played great today. The defense played great, but at that point in time, the, the black shirts were a little stuck on blocks, not tackling the best, things of that nature, maybe over pursuing a little bit. But coming back to the 42 yard field goal, it ended up being a fake field goal. All right, Zaire Wright sniffed it out and stuffed the fake field goal attempt. That was a big time stop for the black shirts. The Huskers next drive, seven plays, 75 yards, capped off by a fourth and goal touchdown run by Dante Dowdell. The Huskers so far in the game are two for two on fourth downs, both short yardage physical rush, running attempts. All right, the score is seven to zero, good guys. 309 left in the first quarter. Now that was Dante Dowdell's fifth touchdown on the season, which puts him tied at the time anyways, more games to play, all right, today and, and, and Saturday, but for top five in the Big Ten Conference. The Rutgers next drive, they get to the Huskers side of the field. All right, it is, I should mention, good to see Tommy Hill back out on the working with that first team defense a little bit, but the Scarlet Knights were gonna go on fourth down, but had a false start. Rutgers ends up punting. All right, Kyle Manungai to this point has eight carries for 64 yards so far, but the Huskers next drive, they were forced to punt. Brian Buscini has played really well this year. Okay, kicks a missile. I called it a missile. A missile of a 61 yard punt at that point. It should be pointed out that Brian has been a bright spot for a struggling, to put it mildly, special teams unit so far this year. Rutgers next drive, the, the black shirts, they're starting to put more defenders uh, up towards the line of scrimmage, trying to load the bo box to stop the run a little bit. And then inexplicably, Rutgers just started throwing the ball like crazy, which was hard to understand. I know they were putting more defenders in the box, Tony White was, but they still just kind of abandoned the running game, it seemed to me, but they couldn't really run the ball all day after this, threw the ball a ton, right about this time, here are my notes, Rutgers started airing the ball out, not really sure, uh, it's, they're not really great at it, not sure why they're doing that. They drive down, attempt a 52 yard field goal that hits the upright. Their field goal kicker is now two of five on the season. All right, they've left six points on the field so far, not something they've done much of this year after having their first winning season last year since 2014. Now the field goal kicker's Career long was 51 yards, but distance wasn't an issue. It was plenty long. He just pushed it to the right. Something he's done quite a few times this year. I should mention Heinrich Harburg on the previous series for the Rutgers was in a ru at running back for a play. On that play, Dante Dowdell was in a fullback and he got the carry. Now, Nebraska's got the ball again. Their next drive, Riola, there's a high snap. All right, he ends up throwing an interception. Only the fourth Huskers turnover on the entire season so far after having 31 turnovers a year ago. Rutgers, at that point in the game, it did not go in their favor the rest of the game, but that point in the game was plus four in the turnover margin on the season so far. Blackshirt's back on the field, right? And they were back to playing Blackshirt football. They played great. 
today. And it was great to see Javin Wright, linebacker Javin Wright, playing a little more or a lot more today after dealing with injuries and blood clots up to this point of the season. Now, after a 23-yard return the F on the aforementioned interception I mentioned a minute ago, Rutgers drive starts at the Huskers' 43-yard line, six minutes left in the first half. They drove into our territory a lot today. They started with the ball with great field position a lot today. The Blackshirts just straight up balled out. All right, two plays later, Ty Robinson sack his fourth of the season. Rutgers goes for it on fourth down. Marquise Buford intercepts. Ethan Kelly, Kelly McManus's pass. Nebraska ball. Now, I, I, coming into this game, I want to know, could they take advantage of Rutgers' front? Rutgers only had four sacks on the entire year coming into this game. And their entire defensive line had zero tackles for loss last Saturday, all right, in their last game against Washington. I wanted to see if we could take advantage of that. And Greg Schiano even admitted they were trying to find their way and their identity on defense in their own right. The Black Shirts, I noted, playing well so far. All right. And again, not sure why Rutgers was passing so much. The Black Shirts don't appear to be loading the box anymore is my note that I have here. All right. Now, Rutgers, like I mentioned, they had driven down to our 33, 34, and 36-yard line, but no further. No points up to this point in the game. And frankly, not our problem. <laughs> that was their problem to deal with. All right. Our next three plays were runs. Then Dylan Riola completes a 30-yard pass to Jamal Banks. Okay, right at the edge of the red zone, about that 25, 30 yard line. Ramir Johnson, a running back, he makes rips off an 18 yard run to get down to Rutgers' 12th engineer and Bonner. Run has a 12 yard touchdown run around the edge, his second touchdown of the season. It's 14 to nothing. Good guys. Rutgers next drive, another INT, this time by Zaire Wright, who has been a bright spot, the USC transfer. Plays with a ton of energy and has played well. All right, the Huskers end up pooch kicking. To end the half, we're up 14 to zero. I should mention the pooch punt. The pooch punt was from Dylan Riola. I made a note. Can he also kick field goals too? I guess we'll see about that later. All right, the Huskers significantly outplayed Rutgers in the first half. Kind of the story of the season. We tend to, we dominated Colorado in the first half. We, we significantly outplayed Purdue in the second half. Significantly outplayed Rutgers in the first half. Again, I'm just going through and reading my notes as the game was going along, along. I clearly did not know what was gonna happen in the second half just yet, but here are my notes. We significantly outplayed Rutgers, the Scarlet Knights, so far in the first half. Now Rutgers was plus 48 in the point differential department in the first their first halves of all their games combined this season up to this point coming into today. The Black Shirts have allowed, on the other hand, zero points their last two first halves, Rutgers and Purdue, 10 points the last four first halves they played combined and allowing an average of 3.33 points in the first half period this year. All right, I do want to give a quick shout out to our sponsors, DPS Concrete Construction. They're your local concrete experts and retaining wall experts. If you're in the Omaha metro area or in the state of Nebraska, anywhere, these are the guys to go to to get your concrete work done, your retaining walls built. And if this is the line of work that you do, Jason Armstrong is one of the best bosses you can find. Go to dpsconstruction.net. Also, Bonzo Pool and Spa. Check them out at bonzopool.com. They have phenomenal hot tubs, phenomenal pools, phenomenal saunas. They also take care of hot tubs, pools, and saunas. They put in my family's hot tub, my family's pool, and they did a phenomenal job. Jeff Bonzo does a great job. Check them out at bonzopool.com. Again, that is bonzopool.com. All right, quick look at the halftime stats. They, Rutgers has ran the ball for 72 yards. We've ran it for 86 yards. We ran the ball nearly 10 more, for 10 more rushing attempts than they did. I think it was like eight or nine. Passing yards, they only have 73. They're pretty balanced actually, even though they seem to have thrown the ball a lot more than I would have anticipated. We threw the ball for 120 yards. All right, they, they had 31 plays, we had 45. Their total offense was 145 yards. Our total offense at halftime was 206. When it comes to third down conversions, they were one of six at halftime. We were five of 10. That's a big difference right there, staying on the field. Fourth down conversions, they were 0 for two and we were two for two. And in red zone scoring chances, they kept driving the ball. They started with great field position, but they hadn't even gotten the red zone yet. All right, Nebraska was two for two in the red zone. Their quarterback, Ethan, uh, yeah, Ethan Kelly McManus was six of 15 with two interceptions, rough first half. Kyle Manungai, had 10 carries for 67 yards. So when I said he had eight carries for 64 yards, there was like five minutes left in the first quarter. He only had two carries the rest of the half. And I believe a lot of that is due to what Tony White and the defense were doing, I should add. All right, rushing wise, 
Just a note here, Emmett Johnson had zero carries in the first half. I just thought that was interesting. Dante Dowdell, 10 carries for 40 yards. Ramir Johnson, five carries for 34 yards. Dylan Raiola was 11 of 18 for 120 yards with a pick. Ramir Johnson was also the leading receiver for Nebraska in the first half as well. Here's a couple of notes from the University of Nebraska themselves they sent out at halftime. All right, the official temperature at kickoff today was 97 degrees, the hottest kickoff temperature at Memorial Stadium for a home game since 1985. Nebraska held Rutgers scoreless in the first half. They have pitched three first half shutouts in their six games so far this year, and they've allowed just 20 total first half points on the season. And today's game is the 600th all-time game of Memorial Stadium dating back to 1923. And the captains for today's game were Ramir Johnson, Justin Evans Jenkins, Makai Gabayber, uh, and Elijah Judy. All right, now, I, sh I just wanted to mention this. I randomly, I'm walking back to my truck afterwards, and I randomly run into Nash Hutmaker's grandma. She recognized me, we took a photo together, threw the bones together, I just thought that that was kind of cool. Now, I made a note here. Where we're gonna play four full quarters. It feels like we're taking over the game. Will we actually do it, or will we let Rutgers back in the game? Will Nebraska find that killer instinct, for, and for the first time this year, put their foot on the throat of the opponent and put them away? We obviously know what happened. Hey, we want a one-score game. All right, Matt Rule mentioned, as far as the offense, he wants to be more balanced on offense going forward. Now, Nebraska's offense is top 10 in the country, and the amount of first downs they've gained this year, just total first downs they've gained this year, top 10 in America. All right, let's see these second half adjustments. That's the note that I wrote. Both teams punt to start the second half. Oh, wait. We went to punt, but it was blocked. Unbelievable. Our special teams are just flat out unacceptable. I can, I can use all sorts of words. I can say all sorts of things. I can yell and scream. Unacceptable. I don't know how else to put it. The special teams is flat out unacceptable. They flat out gave Rutgers a chance to be in this game and have a chance to win and take us to overtime. And that and the offense actually needed to do more in the second half too. It really just came down to the defense just shutting Rutgers down time and time and time again, even though Rutgers had opportunity after opportunity to score. All right, that's our fifth kick that we've had blocked this year. Three punts and two field goals. By the way, two block punts today. Rutgers first and goal at Nebraska's two yard line after the block punt. They ran six plays, all right, there was a pass interference in here, so it gave them extra downs. All right, they ran six plays and still couldn't get in. The black shirts are straight up balling. They have yet to allow a rushing touchdown this season. I mentioned that earlier, but that's number one in America. The good guys still have 14, the other guys zero. Nebraska's next drive doesn't go anywhere. Brian Bussini, short punt out of our end zone. He clearly is having a lot of back pain. Again, I noted that here one more time. Rutgers possession starts at Nebraska's 28. Again, phenomenal field position for Rutgers. Blackshirts sack Rutgers twice and absolutely smother their quarterback two of their next three in two of their next three plays, I should say. Rutgers lost 19 yards back to the 47-yard line, okay, and was forced to punt after starting the drive at our 28. They had to punt from our 47. Rutgers' last eight plays, going back to when they started with the ball on the two-yard line, all right, and the 28, they started in the two and the 28 and came away with zero points. They, this is because they had a total net of minus 16 yards on their last eight plays combined. The Huskers' next possession, they fake punt. Matt Rule was coming out to win today. He was not scared of losing. I'll tell you what, I love it. And I, I made a note, anything to avoid punting, I guess. All right, but Brian Brusini had a beautiful 30-yard pass to Isaiah Nayor for the first down. Nebraska now 3-of-3 three three on fourth downs today, twice on our own side of the field they've converted. The Huskers end up punting. Um, by the way, all went smoothly on this particular punt, but Brian Bersini pins the Rutgers at its five yard line. So far today, Rutgers ran 27 player plays inside Nebraska's territory and had zero points at this point. And Nebraska ran 15 plays inside of Rutgers territory. And seven of eight Rutgers drives to this point had come into our side of the field, all right? This is by far Rutgers' worst starting position of, the t of today. Now Rutgers drove the ball a ways, but ended up with no points. And then I wrote, there's not much to report for a while here in the fourth quarter, but with about five minutes to go, Rutgers scores a touchdown, a, a, a touchdown pass. All right, and it's seven, seven to 14. All of a sudden, it's a one-score game. The crowd goes very quiet. The Huskers have lost 24 of their last 28 one-score games. Eh, well, we got the win today. But at this point, and Nebraska was one and six under Matt Rule on games decided by eight points or less.
All right, at least at this point. Now, I said this game was going to be close. I said it was going to be low scoring. I said it was going to be ugly. Rutgers was undefeated for a reason, hadn't had a tough schedule, but they have a lot of returning experience, not the most talented players in the world, but they're well coached. And I made a note, we still haven't put a full game together as a team yet, not even close. But alas, the black shirts step up, they end the game, and number 90, James Williams, shout out to my man. First of all, phenomenal number, had a great day. Two sacks, two TFLs, and really, he ended the game by hitting Kathan, uh, Ethan Cal Kate, oh my gosh, Ethan Kelly McManus, easy for me to say, good Lord, easily could have been a third sack. All right, but the good guys end up winning 14 to seven. Nebraska is five and one for the first time since 2016. Here are my final thoughts. Ethan Kelly McManus, that's his name. All right, the offense, more balanced today, but haven't played a full game yet this year and really kind of slept walk through the second half. All right, good first half, second half, good thing the Blackshirts played so well. All right, defense played great, gave up the one touchdown, but they played great for four full quarters, and they're really the reason we won the game today. Our special teams, again, just unacceptable. I don't know what else to say, flat out unacceptable. All right, I do feel like, like Nebraska's back on track. Yes, there's things to work on. Yes, there's things to improve on, without a doubt, but I feel like we're back on track, and here's why. One more win makes us bowl eligible, and we got six games left. If we just win half of them, we end up eight and four. We're at least back on track. All right, and I should mention, Rutgers did leave around 16 points on the field, including a drop touchdown pass in the fourth quarter, just to keep everything relative and in perspective. But that game versus Indiana, who's currently number 23 in the country, okay, in two weeks, it's going to be a pretty big game. All right, if you want to get a mer merchandise like this or a shirt like this, go to characterchronicles.com. See all the post-game reaction from Corn Craze, Corn Nation, Doc Talk on Sunday night, um, all the writers, all the shows. Check it out at characterchronicles.com. If you're looking for the merchandise, the new stuff, you actually have to click see more and scroll through the pages to see the new stuff. I don't know why it does it like that, but we're working on it. But that's where some of my favorite stuff is. Here are my three questions for your fine folks at home. Number one, will Nebraska be ranked next, next week? Number two, are the black shirts now playing like they're fully capable of? And number three, do you believe Nebraska is officially back on track? Let me know in the comments below. Go Big Red Noise. Remember to throw the bug.